Hi there. Back out in the garden, or should I say, we're in the summer house. It's far too noisy in the garden. There's kids streaming, lawnmowers, builders working. So I've decided to come inside, even though it's a sunny day, and do this video from inside the, the summer house. Now, in my last video, we had a look at the Maverick Air drone and we covered its basic controls and settings. It was a bit restrictive because I could not fly the drone in the garden because I'm obviously too near to buildings and also in the suburbs of, uh, of Sheffield. So, in this video, I'm now going to show you some of the intelligent flight modes I use when I take my drone with me while camping. It's all going to be filmed from the garden uh, due to lockdown, as you can understand, we're not allowed really out too much. But luckily, I have loads of footage from when I was learning to fly and loads of footage from previous wild camps. So, I hope to demonstrate how I use the drone to enhance my wild camps using this footage. I'm going to show you quick shots first. These are automatic flying sequences that the drone does all on its own. They're very simple to use and they pro pro provide fantastic results. We're going over to the controller screen now and I'll show you how I access quick shots and then we'll look at some, uh, some examples from previous footage. So this is in the intelligent flight mode screen. You have to have the drone actually flying in the air to access uh, quick shots. The second icon, uh, icon along is quick shots, press that. Here you can see all the quick shots along the, the bottom. You can see this droney circle, helix, boomerang, rocket and asteroid. I've selected the first one, droney, for this uh, demonstration. You can now set the distance. I'm setting it to the maximum, 200 meters in this case. Press go and it counts down three, two, one, and it's off. You use the same method for accessing all the different quick shots. I'll show you some examples now from uh, my earlier footage I took on on wild camps and, and when I was learning to fly. So the first one is Drony. It's on the moors high above Sheffield. Lovely little campsite this, used it many a time. As the drone flies away, it records yourself and what is beyond. And as you can see, in the distance, we've got the three dams at Redmire's. Beautiful area. Another drony, this one. We're at Carl Walk. That's an ancient Iron Age hill fort and I'm stood just below it. As the drone flies off, it shows you the hill fort and then as it gets further away, it reveals Higator beyond on the skyline. Beautiful. This next one is Circle. Same procedure as before to lock the drone on yourself. It then will circle you at the radius you've set. 
revealing whatever is beyond and in this case we've got the city of Sheffield probably a thousand feet below us in the distance so another circle here as you can see I've no need to hold the controller I've put that down on the floor but the drone will carry on circling me at uh, its set radius so I can walk through and it will record me as I actually walk through the circle gives a, a great impression as you walk towards your campsite So we'll have a look at Helix now. In this one, the drone will circle you, but in a spiral. It increases in height and in diameter as it uh, spirals round you. You can set the direction and you can set the distance. Summer up on Houndkirk. It's now March up on Hound Kirk and we'll we'll do the helix again. Gives a great view as it gets further away. Normally I'd have my tent pitched in a location like this. On completion, the drone returns in front of you or wherever it's set off from and just hovers there, waiting for its next instruction. We'll have a look at Boomerang now. In this quick shot, you'll see the drone quickly fly, flies back and gets behind you. And then it slows down. So it, it kind of reveals what you are actually looking at. And then like a boomerang, it comes back round again and returns hovering back in front of you. Next one we're looking at is Rocket. Now I don't use this one a lot. It basically just goes straight up like a rocket. You can uh, set the, the height you want it to go to. So I've set it at 120 meters, which is the uh, maximum height uh, for a drone under UK laws. It's good at revealing the area you camped at. This is actually a little quarry. Again, not far from Ringing Low. You may recognise it. It was from my back in time camp. I loved making that uh, video. Brought back so many memories. But yeah, that's a rocket for you. So we'll, we'll have a look at the last quick shot now and it's called Asteroid. I think this is one of the newer ones. I've actually only used it a couple of times. Again, it's not one I use a lot. It basically flies away from you like a droney and then it takes a series of panoramic photographs all round, puts it all together and then gives you this global image like this. It's certainly different, but again, it's not a one I use a lot on my wild camps. Now quick shots, it's a great way to show a campsite off. Say you've just climbed up a hill, you get your tent pitched, you're feeling a bit tired, but you can, say, set the drone off on a drone. It flies out 200 metres, records where you camp. 
so easy to do and provide such fantastic footage. Now the next intelligent flight mode I want to talk about is Active Track. The drone basically will lock onto you and it tracks you, it follows you. There are three different types of Active Track. There's Trace. I'll sort of try and demonstrate with this. So with Trace the you you get the drone up in the air it locks on you and then you can walk towards it and it records you or it can be behind you and it records you and it, it tracks you it literally follows you another one is profile and that flies alongside you again filming all the time i find that great for say you're walking along a ridge path and it films you, but it films a fantastic view at the side. So that is really good. But probably my favourite one, the one I use the most, is Spotlight. You get the drone up in the air, uh, gate locked on you, and then, if you, especially if you're walking around a corner, the drone will sit there like it's on a giant tripod, and it'll just turn, and it will follow you as you walk round. And I have used that on, on many of my videos. It's one of my favourite ones, I think. Sometimes I do have problems with getting it to, to lock on me. I'll, I'll try and demonstrate this. Uh, it's the same thing where you get the green box, you draw around yourself, and that will then lock on you on the screen. But usually, I've got subdued clothing on. I don't go out in bright gear, so I might have got a green coat on or a very subdued colours and I find it doesn't always lock on me straight away. I set off walking and then I have to turn around and the drone sat back 50 metres away and it hasn't moved. So I do have a few problems that way but eventually I usually get the, the bit of footage I wanted. We'll go back over to the controller screen now and I'll uh, I'll show you how active, active track works and examples of all three trace, profile and spotlight. So again, enter the intelligent flight modes, press the active track icon, that's the third one along. The screen shows the three active tracks below. You can see you've got Trace, Profile and Spotlight. Same as before, draw a green box round you with your finger, press go and it's locked on you. And you're free to, to move now, the drone will stay with you. I'll show you some examples of all the different active tracks filmed on a uh, previous camps and walks. This first one is Trace and we've got the drone in front of me. As you move, it moves back and tracks you as you walk. I have found it does sort of veer off a bit and you find you're moving your body to steer it. As you'll see, I have moved off the path a bit to keep the drone in front of me. Again, the drone is in front of me and it's tracking me as I walk up the road. It does start to veer off, but I just leave it and keep walking up and it works out really well. A quick wave at the Peak District Boundary Stone and then as I set off up the road, it follows me up the road. Worked out a lot better than I thought it would that uh, little sequence. So in this uh, active track trace I've got the drone behind me 
and it, it follows me as we walk up this path and then as you get to the top it reveals what is ahead. So the drone is following me again. We're actually on Carl Walk, the ancient Iron Age hill fort. Now, as I start dropping down the path, the drone gets a bit nervous. As I disappear through these rocks, it loses sight of me and it, it sort of just hovers behind the rocks waiting for me to appear or come back and give it another instruction. Another example of active track profile walking along the side of the stream at the bottom of Fairbrook on my way up to my Chinese wall camp. Now this is how a bit of drone footage should look and more importantly sound. You can hear the stream in the background. It ain't that easy. If you record your voice while the drone is flying all you'll get is the whine of the drone in the background. That's no good. So you've basically got to record your drone footage record separate audio, put it together in the editing, uh, editing screen and you'll get something like this which is, is far superior. This is how a bit of drone footage should look and sound. Again, here we are with active track profile on a wintry day on Kinder Scout on my way to my Chinese wall campsite. It really shows the location up with Fairbrook Nays in the background. I wish I was up there now. We're going to have a look at uh, Active Track Spotlight now, the final one of the, the three Active Tracks. In Spotlight, the drone basically sits in the sky as if it was on a giant tripod. And once it's locked onto you, it will track your every move. The drone doesn't move, it just rotates. It basically reveals where, you, where you've come from and where you're going. Leaning block on Higator in this case. Here, Spotlight tracks me as I try and negotiate some boggy ground, which I might add is the source of the River Porter one of Sheffield's rivers and we're about a thousand foot up high above the city of Sheffield. At the same time revealing where I'm heading to, my campsite high on the moors. Oakham Citra, one of my favourite bottled beers at the moment. Now another flying feature I use on my wild camps is point of interest. Basically the drone will lock on you or whatever feature you want. It could be a, a, a church spire, it could be anything. Usually it's myself or my tent. So you get the drone above you, lock it on, and then you can send it a bit higher. You can set, set the altitude, the radius, the speed, and the direction. And the drone will just circle round above you 
and it films you all the time. I've had some great results with that. I'll show you some examples. So this is Coal Walk, the ancient Iron Age hill fort. I'm in the middle, if you can see me. And that is my point of interest that the drone has recorded and locked on to. It's not me, it's the actual location I've set it on. So if I was not there, it would still circle this point. As the drone... As the drone circles the point of interest, you are free to move the camera or alter any settings on the camera. The drone looks after the flying and then you can operate the camera or just leave it as I often do just to film what it is circling. Another example of point of interest I'm above the road that crosses Burbage Moor towards Burbage Bridge. The drone is circling, it's about 400 foot above me and it, it's just circling and I'm just using a little bit of that footage. You can probably make out Higator and Carl Walk in the distance. Back up uh, on Kinder Scout at my Chinese wall camp. Now for some reason I always have to stand on the highest rock I can find. I can't help it, I've always got to do it. But look at that view, such a fantastic view. That's Fairbrook Nays. And as you can see, the sun is on its way down. Not much daylight left now. So there's just one final method of flying I'd like to show you. In normal flight, the drone's maximum speed is about 20 miles an hour. If you switch that button there, which is on your controller to sport mode, the drone's maximum speed is now 40 miles an hour. All the sensors are disabled, so you've no um, obstacle avoidance, so you've got to be careful. But that drone will now fly at 40 miles an hour. I'll try and demonstrate to you with a bit of video footage how fast that is. Right, the drone is hovering about eight foot above the ground in front of me. All I've done is pulled the right joystick back and that flies the drone backwards. I'm not touching anything else, so it will stay precisely at that height. I've flown it back probably about 800 feet. You can probably just make out where I am stood at the grouse butt. Now it's just a matter of pushing the stick forward and the drone's on its way back. It soon picks up speed to 40 miles an hour, shoots straight over my head and finally comes to a stop overlooking the dams. Same flight but a bit lower. This time the drone's about four or five feet high. 
back it off. It's soon up to its 40 mile an hour as it goes by nearly a thousand feet. Stick forward and here it comes. 40 mile an hour skimming over the heather. Gonna have to duck for this one. Wow! Straight over my head. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Certainly a clever bit of kit. I've tried to show you how I use the drone on my wild camps. I feel it really shows up the beauty of these places that I choose to camp. There's still a lot more to learn, especially with the, the camera settings and that side of things. But I, I feel I know the basics and I'm happy with that at the moment. So if I could thank you for watching. Hope you found it interesting and like the drone footage. And I'll see you soon. It'll probably be from the garden again. Bye then.